All right, so now this video, I'm going to show a uh, simple circuit I have for charging a supercapacitor. This is a 4 farad supercapacitor. This one's rated for 5.5 volts. I know it's hard to, to see, but uh, just trust me on that. And uh, our goal now is for charging a supercapacitor to 2.7 volts, because as you can see, that's the limit for this one. So this is really a knockoff supercapacitor, but it's cheap. It's a, a few dollars, three or four dollars, depending on uh, where you can find them. They're only rated for uh, 2.7 volts, but they do have a lot of capacitance. It says 500 farad, but generally they fall way short of 500 farad. But uh, usually they're still in the hundreds of farads, these cheap ones. So in any case, to begin with, we're going to take the power supply. For this circuit, we want, this is a common breadboard power supply, we want 3.3 volts. So, one thing to be aware of is that we have a diode here, and the diode drops about 0.6 volts when it's forward biased. So when we're charging it, we're going to lose about 0.6 volts of this 3.3 volts, which will give us about 2.7 volts. Now, the uh, resistors here, these are to limit current, mostly to protect the power supply. The power supply is rated for a maximum of 700 milliamps. And these are 47 ohm resistors. Now these are one watt resistors. They're not the commonly used quarter watt resistors because if we were using five volts across these resistors, they would be dissipating about half a watt of power. They're only 47 ohms, and uh, it's gonna be slightly above half a watt of power. So we want double that. So I'm gonna use one watt resistors here. And uh, as I said, they're 47 ohms. When we put four of them in parallel, they don't realize the other ones exist. They just know the voltage across them, and they allow amount of current. So we'll get four times the current with four parallel uh, resistors here and so this supercapacitor is really nice because it snaps into the breadboard it is polarized there's a, a dash on this side this is the negative side and there's a plus signal symbol on this side and there's also arrows they're kinda hard to see but they're pointing towards the uh, negative side of the capacitor so you have to charge it that way now the diode as I said blocks about 0.6 volts that's when uh, let's see if I can get that focus. That's when uh, this side is more positive, this side is more negative. Once we charge the supercapacitor and turn the power supply off, then there'll be a voltage across the supercapacitor, but not the power supply. So it will want to push current from a positive through the power supply to negative. That LED will light up. I'm sure that's probably bad for the board in some way so I don't want that to happen so the diodes also preventing the supercapacitor from discharging so it will hold its voltage when I turn uh, the power off so this is an important part of this circuit so now enough talking about the circuit let's set this uh, multimeter to measure voltage so this is an auto ranging meter all I have to do is set it to voltage and uh, it does the rest. It's rated for up to 600 volts. That's a, a dangerous amount of voltage, but uh, in any case, enough about the meter. Let's uh, actually take a reading. So to begin with, we do have about uh, 0.4 volts across the uh, supercapacitor now. So generally these have some voltage across it at all times and uh, so let's try to get a voltage reading right when we turn the power supply on and as you can see first off the voltage jumped up quickly I want to talk about that for a second so there's internal resistance a lot of internal resistance with this supercapacitor you're going to see when I turn the power off it instantly drops really fast and uh, I did a video a while ago addressing that I might do another one but uh, that's one thing about 
these super capacitors I have that plug into the breadboard easily. But uh, the main takeaway right now is you can see we got a steady increase of voltage. It keeps going up. And that's because we have current flowing into the capacitor, the super capacitor. So to take a current reading, I'm going to move this jumper. So now the current is based on the uh, voltage of the power source and the voltage of the super capacitor, but it's the voltage of the power su source minus the diode drop and then minus the voltage across the super capacitor. That would give us the voltage across the resistors and the resistors set the current. So we're going to measure current. I'm going to set the meter to measure milliamps and uh, it's not near as auto ranging when it comes to current as it is voltage. You have to set it to the proper setting, but in fact, I don't have to do that now. No current can flow. We have an open circuit right now until I complete the uh, circuit through the meter. And there you can see we got about 40 milliamps of current going through there right now. And I mean, you could you could do the math. The numbers are changing. The current's going to be dropping because the voltage of the power supply is steady, but the voltage of the supercapacitor is going up. So as the voltage goes up, there's less voltage difference across the resistors, and then there's going to be less current flow. And uh, that's just a basic property of uh, resistors and capacitors. Generally, they're called the RC circuit, or the RC uh, time. I can't think of the proper terminology right now. But uh, the charging of the capacitor depends on the voltage difference between the power supply, the capacitor, and the resistors. And as you can see, we're getting to about 20 milliamps as we go along. So, as the supercapacitor charges, it's going to go slower in this particular circuit because we don't have a constant current source the amount of current depends on the power supply and the supercapacitor 